talk about one of the most influential principles for the modern times when they're looking at it. It's situational leadership introduced by Paul Jose and Ken Blanchard way back in 1969, but it has been you know, developed and modified ever since because uh, there has been a lot of thought about this being highly relevant um, for the modern times. So, um, literally it's about being flexible up to now, uh, you know, up to the 1960s, like the leadership theory is just one solution for everything, kind of one size fits all sort of a plan. But uh, when it comes to the situational leadership, it's a leader that changes and he develops, he comes up with multiple leadership styles by adapting to the different situations and uh, you know, coming up with different styles for the different kind of tasks at hand. Of course, when the employee is less uh, experienced, he may be having uh, one method. When the experience is more exploit, uh, more more experienced, he'll be coming up with a different method. So he has four methods to think about. One is a direct style. The other one is a coach coaching style. It's the supportive style. The other one is a delegating style. So. Um, you know, especially in a dynamic environment like the modern business place today, where you know the changes are very, very fast and the competition is extremely high, the chance of dominating one field is very difficult. So the company has to come up with the business has to come up with so many new ideas every now and then, and the companies have to go for multi-skilling and multitasking rather than having a huge workforce uh, with a dominant industry for one. A particular sector of the market what we have is multiple players in one industry trying to all jostle for position with a limited workforce with extremely uh, you know tight budgets so there this kind of dynamic style of leadership no wonder right it's pretty much applicable though it was introduced in 1960s very much so so the entire line of thinking by Paul and Ken has been that you know there's you you can't have one style of leadership you have to come up with different styles to suit different scenarios yeah let's talk about these methods one by one One is a directing method ideally when an employee is a brand new one a less experienced one perhaps the workplace has a larger number of employees maybe uh, maybe a production setting a heavy driven sales setting like here, the employer, so the manager works like the traditional boss, directing, right? Giving orders, give them specific tasks and specific deadlines. Yeah, uh, that sort of thing. Uh, yeah, sometimes in an emergency also, manager taking the lead, you know, leading from the front line. And generally, when you, what you, what you have to do in the workplace is repetitive. That means again and again, it's the same thing. Imagine something like an apparel factory, perhaps for new workers, for inexperienced workers, this method, the directing style would matter in the situational leadership. What about the coaching style? But this is more interactive where the manager tries to convince, convince the employee, get him, get him or get them agree to the work, make them believe in the work uh, before you begin the work. Perhaps in the IT industry, maybe, or uh, maybe in marketing, especially sales and marketing. You know, the manager has to convince the employee about a particular method. So, especially in the service-driven industry, the buy-in of the employee is very, very essential to make him do real, genuine work. So, they are the coaching style, not directing, but a coaching style where, you know. It's not just uh, doing a one task, the creativity of the workforce is a relevancy, like in sales and marketing, or maybe other kind of uh, services. So they are the buy-in, coaching. Next one is, yeah, support. Um, normally if the employee is an expert, you know, an experienced one, or perhaps uh, one with uh, deeper skills they of course what the manager needs to do is to create an environment for the employee to do his thing so that is more supportive if I give an example like perhaps uh, 
What about an audit firm, an accounting uh, uh, operation, or perhaps um, maybe a medical setup, a hospital, perhaps a school where, or maybe a university where everyone is a particular bearer of a particular skill or a talent. So he knows his thing. So the manager's role is to support him in what he does. The last one, the delegating. This is the highest level possibility. Here, um, the work is completely allocated to the worker and the worker is free to do it. So a manager would get involved only if it's very necessary. Um, other than that, the employee would be given freedom to uh, make up his mind or take up his decision. Examples, again, uh, an industry such as how about a construction uh, site uh, where each and everyone is a skilled professional. They know their thing from uh, you know, the design to the construction to the finishing, everything. So they are the relevant professionals you know, at play would be given freedom to make decisions. Yeah, the manager takes a back seat and okay, he may be playing a distant supervisory role, maybe perhaps um, once a week meetings are like that, but general freedom in decision making is given to uh, the employees once they've been given the particular task, so they are free to carry on with their work. That's the delegating. So four different styles, directing, coaching, supporting, delegating. So what does the manager do? Manager adapts to the employees, from the novice employees to the skilled ones, experienced, talents, professionals, so different, different, different types of employees exist in the workplace. So what the manager does is he adapts himself to suit the changes, rather than manager's style being adapted to by the employees, right? It's an employee's ways that the manager adapts himself into. Yeah, assess the situation in different behaviors of the team members. Yeah, you know, uh, to get the best result. That's the purpose. Yeah, it's a flexible approach. Yeah. From direct to delegation, the manager is looking forward to what you call as uh, developing a relationship in his work rather than maintaining a very distant kind of a top-down style of leadership. Manager works with the team, be it support, be it delegating, be it uh, coaching or even directing, right? The manager kind of plays a very direct role in a relationship development. Okay, yeah. Directive style, yeah, generally for fresh employees, yeah, very new batch, maybe still new to work, yeah, that may work. Large number of employees, definitely. Uh, even in a work site like perhaps the you know the construction crew like the you know the, the people who do the, the the base work there may be directive style necessary delegating yeah uh, especially in project management sometimes the directive style might work if the larger number of workforce is involved let's say the building is construction building a bridge so the construction crew may be having some of the directive style, but above, upper level, there may be a bit of delegation or supportive style. Delegating, what is it? Yeah. You know, in, in the program level, when you have this particular project ongoing, and that will have multiple projects uh, lined up coming under the program, the program manager may be delegating the task to the project managers. That is delegating. Giving the motivation, giving the support, you know, sitting at the back and giving them the push needed. What about coaching? Yeah, um, whenever at a, at a construction site, let's say the new, I mean a new engineer working in, or maybe the new quantity surveyor working in, perhaps during the initial phase of a couple of weeks, uh, the manager may play a coaching role just to get him lined up on uh, what sort of work is needed, right? Rather than just dumping him into the workplace and abandoning him, let's say an IT uh, operation. So the newcomer coming in, no matter what his skills are, right? The manager may take some steps to coach him onto the ways of the operation, coaching style. So he may do the coaching style with the new guy while he may be doing uh, some other style with the other experienced people. So different styles at the same time. Right? Support you. Yeah. 
again the IT operation is talk about what about the other people so the, they are the manager maybe you know kind of you know creating the environment for them to do their work support you so you may have one manager utilizing all these four different skills at the same time for different members of the team so that's uh, what's with the situational leadership we have a challenge for the managers but this is one method that is highly popular today right but but the thing is this before we uh, go about the situational leadership the leader the manager must identify his default leadership style that means what is his standard leadership style that that means under a pressure situation what kind of a leadership style is he going into is it directive is it supportive is it coaching or is it delegating so that he has to be very careful of because uh, he should be applying it in only the necessary situations he should not be applying it into situations where it's not applicable so you got to meet the team half no matter what be directing or be delegating or anything in between you have the commitment to compromise with your team even when you are directing right let's say at an apparel factory where there's a large number of workforce involved maybe the directive style of management may be working because stricter deadlines are there but he need to kind of work with the team to kind of make up some kind of an adjustments and identify the comfort zone of each and every employee difficult task but you need to find it out imagine a construction site maybe uh, you know uh, some civil engineering work you know what what kind of work element what sort of a work depth is the comfort level of the particular person you cannot push him beyond that without taking i mean um, a lot of thinking into operation right you can't push a team into a place beyond the comfort zone that may result in some risks you can take the team out of the comfort zone by negotiating talking maybe meeting them halfway compromising you can just order them to go about just you got to get everyone in the same page now this is the beauty of situation leadership you tell them everybody what the big picture is what exactly are we thinking about how are we going to go about what's our deadline i mean what is the end result that we are looking at looking at and okay what you will be getting you know every operation is a learning opportunity for the workforce and the manager should be focusing on hopping on that also right giving that time right you are working with me you are working in this operation by the time you finish up mind you you'll be developing your this this is particular skill especially that will be something very much sellable to a new employee or a new professional and of course yeah each every member having a task and how important that particular task is for the big picture the manager should be talking manager should be communicating just making every employee feel important is a thing and yes very clear expectations the manager should be a very good communicator in situation leadership he should be one who's out of the operation room he should be one i mean out of remote control he should be at site on site working with the team right if you're coaching you have to just get hands down right you have to do that For if you are delegating of course you can stay away but supportive you should be around the scene directing you should be basically leading from the front only in the delegating style you can take a back seat and you know you know create a room for them to move forward in all other three types you should be leading from the front and yes communication is a key element in uh, situation leadership you got to make them understand what the big picture is and how important that employees work for the big picture is you should be made to believe you have to convince the employee on that yes plan b plan c and if possible d o e you have to have solution at hand you got to leave nothing to chance when you go for different leadership styles because you know things like delegating things like coaching supporting you take a little bit of a opportunity to give power to the employee to make decisions right to a certain degree but there the manager should be thinking through what if this doesn't work what's my plan b what's my plan c imagine construction again civil engineering there are so many scenarios where the plan a may not be the optimum one right um, in uh, one particular task so the manager might need to be thinking about other things 
perhaps it could be the weather macro aspects it could be the supply issues again a macro aspect it could be the funding issues it could be a micro factor there right you have to have the plan b and plan c and next one yeah you got to have quality team meetings and the team meeting is something where you take down minutes you have to write down you have to get someone to write down the minutes you have to make employees believe that the team meeting is a relevant thing i have seen so many team meetings in the operational uh, environment where people stand up and people talk uh, but that's it we, we, we share info but there's some smart element missing in quality team meetings generally we may be spending 20 minutes um, at a meeting where we could have done the thing in 10 minutes and there's you know still this ambiguity you know some kind of clarity missing you know the team meeting has to be very very carefully planned it should be open it should be nice it should be welcoming it should be nice communication but we got to make every team member know what is exactly expected and how was the performance uh, yesterday of each and every employee and we should take minutes we must always take minutes in a team meeting can record it and make sure that you do the follow-up the next day whether the work has been done so team meeting is a very very crucial learning point in situation leadership it should be much better than uh, the typical team meetings and employee each and every employee must feel that the team meeting is a very constructive thing especially in the construction uh, uh, sites right the team meetings are for higher quality of course specifics are more discussed in uh, construction industry team meetings than in other you know the management team meetings what are the advantages? This is the key thing. What will be the advantages in situation leadership? Number one, yeah. Manager has options. He can change styles from one to the other. Based on the situation, you can be directive, doesn't work, be the coach, or support you, or delegate. So he has four options at hand. He can move from one to the other. Depending on the maturity level of the employee. What's the maturity? It could be psychological maturity. It could be uh, experiential maturity. What's the psychological maturity? That means having uh, the ability to, you know, think through, uh, I mean, in his mind, having a ready mind to face scenarios. You have to have the cool head, we call it. That's psychological maturity, right? Emotional intelligence, another word. So higher emotional intelligence of the employee or the employees could uh, result in manager giving them more power to decide. Whereas a newcomer employee, yeah, maybe the directive method would work. And then yes, it's pretty simple. Yeah, basically straightforward and simp uh, simple, right? What do you have to do? You have four options. Make sure that you understand each and every employee. That won't be too hard to do. And constant communication with them, constant meetings with them. And, uh, you know, set up uh, the operation. And, of course, communicate to them exactly what to do, how important their work is. So there's relationship that is being kind of uh, nurtured, that's being nurtured, rather than keeping a gap between the team and the manager. And it's that. So it's pretty much hands-on kind of a leadership. Right? So it's just kind of the relationship between the manager and the employee at heart. Definite about it. So you make the employee feel valued in the work you do. No wonder this is very, very popular uh, as a management style today, right? Because of the way, right? Uh, it encourages collaboration. So employees feel the buy-in. They think that they also own uh, the success of the project. So take a look at the statistics. 75% of the employees like collaboration is very important and 86% of the employees, right? Lack of collaboration is an issue in the workplace employers so collaboration plays a big role both for the employees and the employees and the collaboration is what situation leadership is built upon yeah assist the maturity level of the people within the organization yes so this gives a chance uh, to the manager to assist the maturity level of the each and every employee you know, rather than looking at the outer picture of the employee the manager kind of gets the commitment he has a duty also to understand the employee carefully right so that that's extremely important understand his state of mind yeah so what is it they're charismatic leaders why 
they're good talkers good uh, they're, they're very good across the table they're very very good at uh, you know developing connections because they are hands-on right they don't maintain a distance right if you are directing you should lead from the front if you're coaching you have to work with him if you're supportive you have to be around being ready every time needed only in the delegating you are a little bit away in all other three types of leadership you are on site right facing the situation with the team right so that makes you good you have to be a good communicator to be so right you got to understand the emotions of the employees and yes we reside in a very engaged workforce no question about it right and yes Volatility, uncertainty is a definite possibility in any industry, so much so in the civil industry, civil engineering, right? Civil, and, civil, engineering, civil engineering and construction. Yes, some of them could be macro factors beyond your control. Some could be micro, which you can do something about it. So because you are hands-on as a manager, you're working with the team, right? you may be able to have a better hang, better uh, understanding of the issues you're facing. This volatility, uncertainty happens without any warning. You have to take immediate action, right? And empathy is excellent uh, as a quality to a human being, as a manager, right? Understanding the employees, realizing the potential, realizing their comfort zones of the employees. And then just... So that sort of understanding, that sort of connection, that sort of relationship, that sort of chemistry between the team and the manager might help the manager to control the outcomes. Yeah, the manager is emotionally intelligent here. What's the meaning of emotionally intelligent? Not just you are understanding about the task, but you really know how to do it and how to get the team to do it. And how to get the team be okay willing to do it maybe inspired to do it understand uh, the value of the team and in order to get the work done you communicate to the term sorry the team how important it's for the team as well not just for the company clear you know the communication clarity yeah. just of course you go unconventional here right you try to be very flexible you change to the employees you don't make the employees change to you every employee is valued under this system right and you are a transformational leader what about the disadvantages naturally there should be something yes it's difficult for some type of managers I, as we discussed earlier right if your default leadership style is directive okay telling it won't be that easy for you to be the supportive one or delegative one it will not be that easy so the manager has to learn the new styles it's uh, easier said than done right if your leadership styles are so built in so definite uh, with regard to one leadership style it's not that easy for the manager to shift to the other leadership styles because he has to develop those styles. So this is a challenge, right? Especially in an environment like Sri Lanka, where our typical leadership style is more direct, directive. It's not easy to develop uh, coaching style leadership. In Sri Lanka, the manager kind of behaves in a very much of a white collar way. He maintains little connection, little hands-on connection with his team, right? you know uh, by staying inside the room and you know the communicating in the morning uh, only so that kind of leadership may not work so here situation leadership thinks about a different kind of an approach so the other manager has to improve his own leadership styles before you mock in the teams and yes this is an issue also so when we are completely completely focused on the day-to-day -day issues right day-to-day -day management day-to-day -day work because managers work is cut out here right because he's uh, all over the place you know directing supporting delegating coaching he may have less time to think in the long term maybe an extremely hard-pressed working environment uh, perhaps the manager may be losing little bit of time 
that he needs to think through to the future because he's uh, highly involved with the team right the long term plan may be missing out in the manager's mind but of course uh, this is uh, something where a solution can be found okay so manager could allocate some time uh, you know for himself right think through but no wonder right this type of leadership requires a manager to be uh, you know heavily involved end to end uh, in the working time of the day right these four different styles need lots of time off the office out of the table standing working at different working stations talking to so many people within a narrow time band yeah this could be a challenge yeah no question about it yes this maturity thing is a thing that uh, situation leadership is built upon but what is the maturity level of the employee is not an exactly easy thing to find out is not very easy to find out what this maturity level is that is a harder one right so um, because main managers may need time to identify the maturity level imagine a work uh, environment where the project finishes within six months or one year how are you going to apply the situation leadership there that could be a challenge okay anyway in a nutshell this is probably the best of the solutions one of the best in the modern environment we are a very much of a flexible learning manager works to learn together right uh, with the team to achieve the outcome of the uh, desired uh, you know the goal so uh, you know it's pretty effective no question about it no wonder this is why, right, uh, you know, up, cross and down. This is considered one of the best leadership uh, styles around. Catch you in a different lesson.